Welcome, this is where nerds come to learn things. If it's your first time here, click on the subscribe button and on the bell icon to get notifications about new videos. Thanks for watching, hope you enjoy it. Okay, so I've got an issue with my digital video recorder down here. Now this is just the TV plane itself. That's the TV picture, one channel, absolutely fine. Okay, you can see there's no glitching or anything on that, it's, it's all right. If I go to the output from the video, digital visual recorder, you see it's all glitching. Now I've replaced, well I tried substituting the power supply for it, because it's got an external power pack, 12 volt power pack. That uh, didn't fix anything, I've tried resetting cables, that didn't fix anything. So I believe it has a fault inside the unit. Now this isn't only on the playback here of live TV, it's also on anything you record. So when you record it and play it back, it has the same thing on it. It's also glitching the audio as well, so it's obviously got a bit of an issue there. I'm guessing it's probably bad power supply. I've had this thing for probably 8 to 10 years now, something like that. So I'm not quite sure what year it was now, but it's about that kind of age, so it's getting up there. And there's the actual unit sitting in here. So it's a Magic TV, Freeview HD. There's a box and various connections and stuff on the back there. So you've got coax coming in with the antenna. And obviously coax feed back out to the TV for normal live TV. But the actual feed into that channel is through HDMI, which is through this connector here. It's all networked as well, stuff like that. But this is the 12 volt connection here, which I've so substituted a different power supply. And that didn't change anything. So I know it's definitely not the external power supply. It's something internal to the unit. So I'm guessing it's probably something like lead-free solder causing problems or maybe bad caps. So I'm going to pull the thing out and we'll go chuck on the bench and have a look. Okay, so here we are on the bench. Here's the unit. So let's figure out how to get into this thing. Looks pretty simple. Screws on the top, well, on the bottom and on the back. Hopefully, there's some markers inside. I'll be able to find out when it's made. But uh, I'm hoping it's something simple. I mean, I don't know what's actually in here. I've never looked. Never had it open. So I got this quite early on when, when digital TV first came out over here, so it's, it's one of the early units, certainly. Maybe nothing's going to fall out. It's a nice sturdy casing, that's nice and thick. That's good. Look how thick that is. Nice. It's a bit more robust than I was expecting. Alright, what can we see? Well, you got a Hard drive, green power hard drive. So this drive is 2010. So it's nine years old. Yeah, one terabyte drive, there we go. So yeah, so that's 2010. Let's see, look inside the circuitry here. There's a sticker up here. Oh, that one comes off. Hmm, cool. Interesting. That came off really easy. <laughs> <laughs> What's that sticker there? 108 something? I'm using a new lens, that's why I can get really close now. Nah, for sure about more than seven years. Right, let's have a look around and see what we can find. So we've got the tuner section here, which is an enclosed metal can. So we've got the RF section here, the tuner section, which I'm surprised it's actually built into the board. Usually there are a separate module, so from country to country they could change the module, but I guess now these days they're just so ball band and just cover everything, they don't really worry about it. I guess they just have a tune which can do everything and program it. So we've got various electrolytics around, these are the uh, inputs, analog inputts and outputs, and also digital in here as well. We've got here compositive video there, HDMI is here, so there'll be a driver chip and stuff under here. It's pretty warm actually. Uh, USBs and what have you. Ethernet driver there. Ethernet to a filter. So the capacitors, there's nothing looking obviously wrong. Everything's looking reasonable. So there I was hoping for a nice simple fix with bad caps, but for a start, there's quite a few caps in here. And I'm not seeing any which are looking dodgy. Let's pull this drive out and have a look underneath that as well, shall we? It's on rubber mounts. 
So I think I'm going to have to undo those screws to get the drive out. Down there you can see like, you can see some dutters and things in there. So yeah, it's nothing obvious, which is kind of disappointing. So where, do, where am I going to start with this? And that's weird, the way it's mounted on there, that's kind of interesting. And it's also not very tight, is it? Right, that's just a spring on there, so it must be like a clip that goes through the board. I don't know, is that like a, maybe it's a heat sink compound issue, I don't know. I can hear it, it still it sounds like it's still wet, so maybe it's alright. I can't see any obvious problems, which is kind of annoying. I was hoping I would do a visual thing. HDMI connector is the output to the TV, I mean, it could be an HDMI issue. It doesn't seem to be heat related, it doesn't get any worse over time with my that, so I think I might have taken the board out and just check the other side and stuff like that as well. I mean, I would have thought it would be a bad power supply, bad caps. So I suppose I'll take the board out, try and measure some caps to see if I can see anything which looks obviously wrong. Here's the front panel in case you want to see that. Probably do. Good markings on there for 1080, 720, 576, 480, 50Hz, 60Hz, RGB, YUV, HDMI, World, um, all play, pause, I'm guessing that's record, timer, and playback or something, I'm sure. And there's a little indicator there for the drive capacity, so you can see how much um, if your hard drive is used up. And obviously the infrared remote to sensor there, infrared sensor. I'm not a fan of VFDs and this sort of thing because they don't seem to last because they're always on. And they do tend to go darker. I mean, I can actually see here. I don't think you can see it on camera, but this digit here is slightly lighter. That one there is slightly lighter. So these ones here have faded. Those three there have faded. I don't know if you can see it on camera or not, but there is a difference in brightness on those digits. Obviously, the one drip shot on the most. Let's pull these screws out. Let's drive and take the drive out. Hopefully I can find some kind of date code, I mean, I don't know, 2012, I mean, it's the only thing I've seen so far is maybe a 12. So, I'm not 100% convinced yet about that though. Just have to plug these before I loosen it all off. Easy to do. Right, it's secured. Again, with these VFDs, you'll be really careful with these. You don't, be, don't want to damage them. Especially that little lump on the end, this little bulb. That's where they seal the vacuum in. If you, if you break that off, that's it. You're sc you're the screen's stuffed. So, anyway, right now, the situation in like this is that it's got some kind of problem. I don't know what it is. Also, the feed through from the RF, which is down here, the feed through is working okay. It's not like a glitch with the signal level. You think it was affecting the TV on the live view? It would be within the um, RF section, but I don't think it is. I think it's in the digital section somewhere. So I'm thinking it's a power supply problem of some kind somewhere. I've just got to take two of these screws out and slide the cover up. Slide it out with those buffers. There we go. So I've got a little ribbon flex here, which I need to pull up. Pop that out. So it's that flex there. And there's probably some screws in the back I have to take out as well. There's a little connector here for the power. Or the switch. Let's pop this off. A screw here. A couple of screws on the back actually, is four or so. Is it moving on the back? I feel something moving. <laughs> Might be something loose there, interestingly. And as far as the architecture of these things go, I'm not an expert, not by far, so I can only take guesses about how these things are constructed, what each section is doing, um, based on what I know about them, but you know general electronic stuff, but okay, I think that's all those screws out. Don't see any more. Alright, I'll take the board out. Good 
great stainless steel screw so I can't actually pick them up my screwdriver. Yep. All the screws and the cabinet with it. Again, looking at this, I don't see anything obvious. Obviously, some hand soldered stuff around. 27 megahertz crystal, obviously, for the processor. There's a filter here on a DC input, goes through a filter to the ground. It's got an isolated ground, it's interesting. Got a filtered ground. I think I might pop this heat sink off. Hopefully that destroy these clips. This isn't going to work. I need something different, something a bit less clumsy, and something which will probably slide over there and push those in to make a chew. Let me find something. Okay, I think I'm making some progress here. I've got uh, suppliers, and I've got this to try and push it down. And this one seems to be going now. There we go. That's that one. You've got to squash it right down. The hole is really small. It's actually like, basically this thing fills the hole, so it's a bit hard. You've got to squish it right down so you can completely collapse it, and then you've got to push it out whilst still squeezing it and wiggling it sideways seems to help too. So, really not ideal. I don't like this, but it's what's working. Well, at least it's done in the first one. I really think the heat sink does have to come off. Oh, come on. Now I'm recording, it's not going to work. <laughs> of course not. I did try and find something else, but um, I did try and like a socket or something like that, but it just didn't, it couldn't actually fit over it properly, it just wasn't working. But this needs to come off because the heat sink needs checking to make sure it's alright. I've got that one off, but it's the middle one I need to get out. It's like these little push pins. I might have some of these actually. I think I've got something like this. So if I break it, it's probably be right. Yeah, it started moving. Great. We're good now. It's out. And here we go. So there's the processor. And heatsink compound is still wet, so that's all fine. But I need, still need to look underneath it and see what was underneath and see how that actually looked to make sure it was okay. So there's a little bit of cap there, service mount one. There's no signs of leakage. 24 megahertz crystal. You've got some video RAM, some flash, kind of stuff you would expect. Why don't you do some lookups and see what these things actually are? I suppose you want to know what's underneath here, don't you? It's going to involve scraping off the, the heat sink compound. Do you want to know what's under here? Yeah, I want to know what's under here. Let's have a look. Also, upside down. This is multi HD. Sigma. Full HD. Is it? No, multi HD, sorry. That's what I just said. Okay, well. SMP 86. 35LI. There we go. Sigma design. So it's obviously some custom thing. Yeah. Compound back on again. <laughs> so it's still, like I said, it's still wet. It's still fine. So it's not like it's drying out or anything like that. Which can happen with the thermal compounds. So, okay. Well, there's still no signs about what's going on here. I could just try heating a couple of things up, like the HDMI connector. Maybe there's some whiskers going across there, something like that. It looks a bit bodgy, maybe. Is there solder whiskers? Uh, no, I think so. So it's two end pins looking a bit interesting. On the left hand side, they look awfully close. Probably nothing. 
So a really close look at the board and if you see something then let me know. I see a couple of test points here, TP2, TP9 just in here. There'll be others I'm sure, TP3. I wonder if there's a service manual for this thing. I wonder if we can actually have a look online so we can find a service manual. But I'm not actually seeing anything in here which stands out as being a problem, which is concerning because I wanted to fix it. So after a close look, the only thing I can see is this capacitor here has got some kind of residue on the end there. You can see it's like a bit of scum on there. Can't see anything on anything else. The other caps look alright. But if I stick this end on, maybe you can see us too. Now it's slightly raised up as well. Most like it's extruded slightly, it's just not sitting down quite as well as it should, so it's not all the way down. All the other caps are fully down. So I'm wondering if this one is actually failed. Because the only one looks a little bit odd. Right, let's get the cat test there. Right? See if I can test all the caps if there's anything bad. Well, I've tested a few caps so far, nothing obvious yet. Let's keep on going. On there. Yeah, it looks okay. Yeah. 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 Okay. Just could take a little while. So if you've anything that's above, you know, two ohms or something, like one and a half ohms, anything more than that is going to be a sign of a problem. Most likely. Depends on the cap. I'll come back after I've done some more, if I find something. So the cap I was suspicious of over here, let's just test that one. It looks alright, it's no different to this, so I don't really think there's a problem with that one after all. So I've gone through now and tested every single cap on this board. I don't think I've missed any. Maybe I've missed one. Maybe I've missed this one. Oh. Yeah, that's still fine. So I've tested all the big electrolytics. I haven't done the surface mount once. So we'll look at those ones next. If I can get onto them, I should be able to get onto most of them, I think. I hope we can get on most of them. 18 ohms. Mm. 19 ohms. Thirty-nine. Mm, suspicious about all these. Thirty-three. See that one's one ohm. What voltage are these things? Ten volt. Was it twenty-five volt? Sorry, ten UF twenty-five volt. Yeah, I'd expect some high resistances from those. It might be all the service mount caps that are gone, which is paying some guy. That's 3.6, is it? 0.7. Point 0.5. And these are the same caps as over here. So these ones have got a very different resistance to the ones over here. So I think that region might be a problem. Let's keep going. Twenty-five, same caps again. Twenty-five. It could just be circuitry around them. It could be absolutely fine, but that's two ohms. Two ohms. Point two. This will kind of like I would be expecting from them. Point four. Yeah, I'm suspicious about these caps. Definitely. Two ohms. Two ohms. Point 
one point one. So yeah, all these little ten U F twenty five volt caps. I think they're the problem. I have one of these kits. Now they are the right ones. Ten U F fifty volt, fifty volt, fifty volt, fifty volt. So I've got 10 50 volts here. They look similar size. They might be bigger. Now they're bigger. So I probably won't get them on. Just sit one side by side and look. Yeah, that isn't going to fit. They're close. Could give it a go, I suppose. I'm trying. Before I do that, let's move one. Seven ohms. So even that's still significantly different. That's 20 ohms. So no, that's a 4.7 though. That's 50 volt. I don't know if they're exactly the right parts. That's the problem. It may not even be bad. I'm not that used to these, these particular parts, I don't tend to use these. So what else said it was? 20, wasn't it? 7? Seven? 7. I might just try and see if I can get the right parts in. Get exactly the same ones. Yeah, it's all the same ones that's gone, so the 10 UF 25 volt. Every single one of them is the same part. So if I just get a bunch of those, so I need at least 10, I think. Should place all of them. So 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 11. 11 of those caps. Even though some tested OK, I just do them anyway. Right, I'll get uh, 20 of those caps in stock and go from there. So I just got around with the hot air and just heated up various parts on the ball to see if it can just remelt any of the um, old lead free solder which is on here which I never trust anyway so I've done these which I think are probably regulators there's, there's a few of them on here I probably should actually look at them figure out what they are I've done these ones there's some tantalum caps on here I should probably check those out I've also done some around this side as well um, various ICs done all these ICs just to try and um, help them out see if there's any issues I haven't done any of these RAMs or the uh, flash memory that sort of stuff I haven't done, I haven't done those at all Leaving those alone, I don't think it's a memory problem. Um, I think it's probably a power supply thing, some or something like that, some kind of switching problem maybe. It may be underneath this metal block here. I mean, who knows what's inside there? Is that a removable block? I think that's soldered on. Pretty sure the top of that's soldered on. Let's have a look. Yeah, looks like it. Yeah, it's soldered on, so that's not going to come off unless I desolder it. I'm not that interested to see what's underneath it anyway, so sorry if stuff most likely. And I believe that bit's working okay, so I don't have to worry about it. So I've refilled as well, so I heated up the back of the HDMI socket, those pins on there, just in case there's any solar whiskers across the back of the HDMI, because I'm using the HDMI output, and that's the one which is exhibiting the issue. So it could be that, it could be something in here, it could be that chip. Don't know, I'm not going to reflow these, that's just, no, not going there. <laughs> um, maybe if it completely fails, it's worth a try, but I, I'm not going to try doing that. I mean, I know solar whiskers are a thing, so it's possible as, as a solar whisker, but put it back together, try it out, see if there's anything different. I doubt it, but I'm suspicious about these caps. I probably will get these caps in stock and um, replace those. It's not much to get the board out, so there's no harm doing it. Get it back out again and put it apart later on. Okay, let's put this thing back together. What I might do is, I'll do a, a retest on it obviously by the, by, the, um, by the TV. And if it plays up, maybe I'll get in there with a heat gun and just um, heat up areas of the board or maybe cool down bits of the board and see if it changes the, the issue. Because it's entirely possible that uh, if it's a capacitor, you can, oh, that's right, I'm magnetic. <laughs> um, 
If it's a capacitor, then you can actually affect the, the fault, and I might be able to trace it down to a particular section of the board. I'm going to do these up here until I uh, get all the screws aligned. I'll do the rear panel ones first, in case it pulls the board sideways. It's always best to put them in first, and uh, make sure it's all aligned before you start going around tightening. That's my experience anyway. Some people may disagree, but at least that way you know they all go in and all lined up before you start trying to force it into alignment by doing them up. So that did pull the board sideways, I did these up, which is why I didn't tighten up the, the circuit board ones yet. Do those after. Pop the power cable back on again, nothing like forgetting to put that on and wondering why it's dead. Wouldn't be the first time I've done that sort of thing. Let's get the tray in here, it goes underneath like that. Yeah, so I don't know, we'll see if I've, what I've done is, has helped. I mean, I've, I haven't identified any specific issues apart from those caps being suspiciously high value. I mean, that may be normal, but I don't think they are. I think those values are wrong. I think the ESR is better than those caps, so I really do believe that um, that is a problem. Let's put the drive bag in. Hopefully, it's done something. I don't know. But I don't like having an issue like this where I haven't positively identified what the fault was. You know, nothing obvious apart from those caps being a little bit off value, which is likely to be a problem. I mean, I've seen these caps fail many times in automotive situations. You know, like door latches and you know window controls. All right, well, let's just give us this display a quick wipe because I did stick my finger over it. Things to be back together with fingerprints on. I'm just surprised to knock a more positive hole on there. It's not really much, it just lifts off. They've got the latches back to find basically, haven't they? Anyway, so there's actually on the back of this boarding, just see through there, there's a little transformer and stuff in there where it's obviously got a High voltage power supply to run the VFD. So run at a higher voltage. Let's make sure I've only got the right screws left. To be what eight? No, on that. Eight, nine. Nine is all got. Yeah, that looks right. Okay. Hopefully you start something. Swarf, that goes in easy. Right, I didn't plug the drive back in, did I? Ah, oh, bugger, you damn. That's hilarious. Plug the drive back in, Scott. Let's take it apart. <laughs> so plug the drive back in again, because you don't want to forget to do that, because that'd be really stupid. Nothing like putting something back together again and have, finding that you left the, uh, left the cable unplugged. I never do that. Nobody ever does that, do they? Nobody missed it anyway. Right, put the cable back on. Chuck the screws back in. Right, let's go try it out. If it does work, great. Subscribe, give us a thumbs up.
and you know tell your friends that people can fix these things. If it doesn't work, then I guess I'll be having another go at some time and uh, get some new parts. We'll see if we go. Fingers crossed. So the repair didn't work. It's no worse, no better. So I'm going to have to get those capacitors and see if it does anything. Yeah. I'll play with it again another time. Let's have a shot. I'm going to have another go at fixing this thing here. This the dual TV box. I tried to fix it before, failed. So I'll have another go at it. Stick around see how we manage it. I've had some capacitors turn up here, which I believe I need to replace in this unit. I didn't have any at this time, so I'm going to revisit this, going to pull it apart, put some new capacitors in it, and we'll see how we go. All right, let's get the thing opened up first. So I have to get this drive out of here. Got to take out two screws, so I can slide the case out. And get to these screws. All right, now you can have a good close look at it. So there's the board, and they've got these little caps like these ones down here, the ones I want to replace. Some over here as well. Um, I've only got one value cap, but I, only, I, I tested them all. They're all the same value, the ones which are giving trouble or giving slightly old readings. So all these electrolytics all seemed okay, these big through-hole ones. They seemed alright, didn't measure any bad ones from that. It's purely the surface mount ones, so I've got to get some of these surface mount ones off. So that in itself is going to be a little bit interesting. There's not much room to work on there. and I know some people have got things like... The recommended way is to get like a pair of pliers, grab hold of it and give it a twist. It's like I and I've seen results, you know, people doing that and having good results, but it's like it still scares the crap out of me that if you do that you can rip a pad off the board. You know? Is the solder stronger than the pad that's on the board, the, the glue is holding it on the onto the PCB? Uh, I don't know. So I'd prefer not to do that technique. Some people swear by it, but I, I really I'm not gonna go there, I'm just gonna desolder. Far rather uh, do that in a nicer way. I haven't actually had a lot of experience with removing service mount electrolytic capacitors like these ones. It's going to be interesting because it's not something I normally do. Hot air, and we'll go with an easy one first. This just single one over here, which is easy to get to. There you go, it's one off. It's fine, it's easy. Okay, let's do these other ones. Okay. So you're using a stack of heat and a stack of air, it's getting them off just fine. So obviously when it comes to soldering on the new ones, what I'll have to do is um, clean these pads off, put some leaded solder on there as a, like a base tend them and stuff like that and then I'll just put them on and then solder again with a my soldering iron instead I'll do it that way because um, I don't use hot air on these brand new parts if I can avoid it I just want to try and keep the heat down to a minimum so I'll do manual soldering and put them back on again so what I might actually do is go around and take them all off I should be able to identify where they were when I take them off so I might do that this one's going to be interesting by the plastic so I'll take them all off Actually, I might pause the video and take them all off without the video going and um, get it all prepared and we'll come back. So what I'm doing right now is I've got this little heat shield here, a bit of old iPhone shield or whatever it is. So I'm using that to try and block the heat from getting to the connector. As I say, I don't want to damage the connectors. I'll get this angle where you can see what I'm doing. Okay, just can't see it off. So we go, and that's without damaging any of the connectors either, so that's all good. So I think I missed any, that's all those ones off. Yep, okay, so now I can look at cleaning this up. And I've put some leaded solder on all these and uh, getting them a bit easier to deal with.
Oh, it's getting weak. So that's the pads cleaned off, let's put some leaded solder on them, so it's all ready to go, make it a bit easier to do, and hopefully this technique works alright. Okay, now let's give us a clean up, get the worst of the flux off before I put parts down. This camera angle doesn't work very well for this, does it? I keep finding myself in the way of the camera. How much this is really of importance to see anyway, but you know. now these are polarized, they have like a um, on one end, see that's wedge shape, and that actually matches up with the PCB. We have a wedge shape there too, see that on the, on the silk screen, so it tells you which way to polarize them. Okay, is that done? Seems to be that worked. Was I in the way? Yeah, probably. This camera angles are working, is it? Let's change camera angles. This is just ridiculous. So let's repeat the same thing. Get it in place. Tweezers not gonna do it. Let's hold up my finger, hide my fingers here. Just to get it in place and tack it down. And I'll change sides. Okay. And tack down that side, then sort it between them to get it bedded right down. Do another one. So this takes less time to get the things off the board and does to actually put the new ones on. I'm just trying to get the thing bedded right down, that's all. I mean, once it's soldered, it's probably fine anyway, but I'll just try and get them down as low as I can. Just so sitting flush on the board as much as I can. What I'll probably do is go around afterwards and put a little bit of fresh oil on, a little bit of a dam, just to freshen them up a little bit as well. So we'll try and get into there as well afterwards. Definitely would be interesting. Yeah. It's going to be hard to recall because I need to kind of get in there myself. Bear with me a little bit. In. Let's do the next one. And let's send all the harder ones out of the way. Definitely awkward. Can't quite see what I'm doing either. It, it's kind of down, it's got a bit of wobble on there. It's not down properly yet. Might need to get a bit more solder on this bit here. Not pretty, but it will do. Next, hot air would definitely be easier. But I just don't want to get them too hot. That's the only problem because it might explode or something. I'll come back once I've got these ones in. This is you got the idea. Well, what I'll just quickly do now is uh, check for any shorts, in case there's any bridges underneath these capacitors. You never know. Done a short power supply out. That'd be bad. Uh, it's looking okay, I think. Yeah.
Yep. All good. No shorts. So, hopefully that's what it requires. Let's put it back together. Right, let's drop it all back together. So I'm really hoping this does something to improve it because uh, if this doesn't work, uh, I'm out of ideas. It might actually be a logic problem on the ICs, you know, the HDMI driver or something like that. Make you tempted to hit the back of the HDMI port with some hot air in case there's any solder whiskers across there. You can get tin whiskers across on unleaded solder. I think I might hit that with a bit of hot air because that will get rid of anything which is there. Right, let's have a shot, leave an eye. Go try it out. Well, here we go. Let's just see what happens. It's running. The unit is back in the cabinet just down there. It can randomly be glitch and sometimes it'll just be okay for a minute or two, then it'll come back. So I'm just gonna monitor it for a little while. There's some glitching then, but I'm not sure if that was the live stream thing from the motorsport. Let's change channels actually. Let's try a different channel. No, there's a glitch there. So I think it isn't fixed. There you go, glitches. So it's still there. Still playing up. So, no, it's not fixed. Damn. Oh well. That didn't work. Anyone got any ideas? Have a chat down below in the comments and let me know what you think. Yeah, you know, down there. Uh, yeah, bugger. So yeah, thanks for watching. If you found it interesting, give a thumbs up and stuff and comment down below and have a chat down below in the comments. I want to hear your feedback. Anyone's got any tips about these things?